Welcome to another Flute Center of New York sponsored video. I asked the Flute Center of New York to do something kind of hilarious and I just told them to send me something and not tell me what it is. So there has been no preparation for this. If you guys want to know more about my partnership with the Flute Center of New York, I'll link a video down below, but I do have a code that works with them. If you're buying a flute and you use my code JAF, you get free domestic shipping within the US, 10 day trial instead of seven days, 18 month warranty on your new flute, and you can take up to three instruments out on trial at a time. For FCNY music, you can use my code JAF to get 10% off your entire order. If you do use my code, I do get a small commission from it and I thank you very much for supporting because it allows me to do really hilarious videos like this. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into right now. I learned a trick from my husband. He said that his dad would not use box cutters actually to open boxes because it would potentially damage whatever it was inside. So when possible, it was better to just rip the tape off. What is in here? Oh, oh, it's actually an instrument. Wait, is it an instrument? What is this? Without looking at the invoice, I'm gonna see what this is. Oh my gosh. I've always wanted to try one of these. This is a glissando head joint. It allows you to slide between pitches. Oh my gosh. Yes, this is the Robert Dick glissando head joint. The entire description is on here. The glissando head joint gives flutists an entirely new mode of expression, bringing the instrument closer to the sound of the human voice. It is a telescoping head joint with a high performance contemporary cut head joint sliding inside a carrier tube. Two wings extend from the lip plate and comfortably embrace the flutist's cheeks. Moving the flute to the right, okay, slides the head joint from its home position, which is all the way in, and extends the length of the flute. A downward glissando can be made from every note. With the glissando head joint in its home position, the flute is a traditional bem flute, and all repertoire can be played as if a traditional head joint was in use. The glissando head joint can be positioned to tune the flute like any other head joint. I can't So this thing costs $1,250. Not too bad considering the mechanism of this thing. I was expecting much more actually. I don't know if this will actually fit my flute. I'm just gonna give it a try now. Brandon is known to be a little bit too narrow. So I'm gonna guess this. <gasps> I picked this up from the case. It just immediately went. The case is pretty cool because it's designed specifically for this. This width is actually perfect for keeping this in place without it sliding all over the place. So that's why I didn't realize it until I like picked it up out of the case and it started sliding immediately. Ah, okay, so there's a cutout. See that? You see how that it's cut out here? It's cut out basically around where you can slide the lip plate. That is so cool. That is, that's way too cool, man. So this is basically empty space right here. Like I can stick my finger in. I'm gonna try this right now. Okay, Robert Dick, if you're watching this, I apparently have a really fat face. <laughs> For me, this part is actually just kind of cupping my jaw instead of like embracing my cheeks. Moving the flute to the right. Okay, so the home position is all the way down here. This is the home, yeah, that makes sense. That's the normal length of a head joint. Then if I move it up, yeah, that's right, because if you make the tube longer, then the note gets lower. This like pan pipes, right? The longer tubes of a pan pipe gives you lower notes. You're doing that, but just like with one tube here. Okay, now I'm curious as to exactly how low I can go. You know me, my ear is so bad, I cannot tell. I'm just using a random tuner here. Okay, I did not see what that said, so.
That went down like a tritone. It's like a little less than a tritone. That's insane. I don't think this thing will fit on my flute. Yep, there's no way. I need to dig out a, a different flute then. Maybe my Mateki. Before I do that, I just kind of wanted to look at this more. So there's like plastic covers on the inside of here. And then there's another plastic bit up here. So when you go all the way up there, it doesn't hurt the metal or anything. I was always wondering how that worked. Because there's more moving parts, there's more bolts. There's like three bolts on the side here three bolts on this side. There are actually bolts around the crown too. Must be because this tube is not all the way circular around. Down here is fine because this is just cut out here, but then there's a possibility of this like kind of like coming out this way. I can see why they have to bolt that down. That's really interesting. I'm not used to seeing that on flutes. So like seeing the extra bolts, I'm like, whoa, is that like a piece of cork or something in there? I don't think you guys can see it, but like in there, you notice when, when it goes like this, it doesn't make like a chunk sound. So there is something in there that is preventing metal on metal from clamping on each other. Oh, wait a second. Okay, I'm just gonna give that a feel. Yeah, on the inside as well, there's a bit inside of here that's lined with, I think it's some sort of plastic as well. There's actually a little bit of a stopper here too, on the inside. The diameter of this inner tube matches this tube here. It's actually a little thicker right up here. It really is just two tubes sliding in inside of each other like this. I've always wondered how it like was built so that it is so cool to see it all together like this. Very well engineered. The flute I have here is the Dijiao 200. This harkens nicely back to one of the first videos I ever made with the Flute Center of New York. I did a review on this guy and then Dijiao actually sent me this flute as a gift, which I still can't believe he did that. Ooh, and it fits very nicely in here. It only goes down a certain length. There's a little bit of a gap. I don't know if you can see between right here and here. So I'm wondering about the tuning because I would expect that it would go all the way in and then you would have the option of bringing it out a bit. It does feel a little loose on this flute. Let's check the tuning first, just on a regular A. Oh. Yeah, I think I have a fat face. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. So I'm noticing that if you have a chubbier face like mine, you're kind of going to feel like it's sort of slipping. Okay. Right. Nope, it's right on. So I think there's a little bit of a gap that's supposed to be there. Ah, so the problem is there is a little bit of a give. I think I need to find out which way I push. So I push down. Then I need to line it up according to the way I like if it's all the way pushed towards me. I think I have to like actually use my hand to guide this around my face. <laughs> myself a little bit more. Yeah, so I'm riding a bit low. The placement of these braces is in a position that prevents me from being able to lip the pitch higher. It keeps rotating towards me, which essentially causes me to mimic what it would sound like if I lipped something down. push this in any more than it already is, I can't exactly bring up the pitch very much at all. 
So I think, unfortunately, guys, I'm going to be riding low today. Apologies for those of you who have perfect pitch. Let's try out some harmonics. responses everything seems to be done way up here I can't tell if it's because I feel like I can't expand here because of the brace I notice that the high notes speak very well it's like a little ball that you are holding between your teeth you rotate the ball up or down depending on the register you're in higher for higher notes lower for lower notes but I can't seem to get that low C out <laughs> Okay, the ball actually moves forward some more for the lower notes because I feel like I'm creating that vibration like up here. <laughs> so basically high and forward is this entire flute, head joint that is. Okay, you know what guys, I'm curious if it's the head joint or if it's the Dijau because I don't recall exactly how this Dijau likes to be played, but I don't think it was like this. Let's bust out the Mateki. Oh, oh, this is a tighter fit. Yeah, nope, it's not even going in there. Time to bust out another flute. I do have my Yamaha from when I was a kid. Oh, hello baby, haven't seen you in a long time. Nope. Yeah, it's also getting stuck. So, unfortunately, the Dijau is the only one that I can test it on right now. I feel like I have to play like... Like really, 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 really far forward. It does make me wonder, Robert Dick, if you're watching this, would you ever consider mimicking other head joints but with this technology? Because that would be interesting, you know? I wonder if I could produce an even better sound if it mimics something like my Brannon. I think that would be really cool. Okay, okay, straight up, if you're a jazz flutist and you have $1,250 saved up, you, you really need to get this. I am not even a jazz player of, of any sort whatsoever. I admire jazz flutists like crazy, but I don't have the ear to do it. My ear is very weak. Even my playing just now just suddenly sounded much more jazzy. <laughs> doing like some octave leaps there while like shaking it around.
if you want to get to a whole tone down you're going about like maybe a third the way up Did you notice that the uh, the tonal quality changes a bit? If you play at the home position a G with the normal fingering, but then if you play it with a B, but like all the way up here, it j and then you get that G out. Do you hear how much hollower that is? Mm, this has some interesting implications because then that means that you could potentially just use two whole tones higher than the note that you actually want to play to sort of force a more hollowy mysterious sound that is not a hollowy sound that i can get on any other head joint the literal tube is so much longer but you are fingering it with a more open fingering it kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies it's so uncharacteristically hollow for that note like that note should not sound like that, you know? Versus Like even when I give more body to it, it still retains that like weirdly hollow sound. Oh, it's easier to crack. I think it's because the tube is longer. And that's me blowing in exactly the same way. Do you hear how radically different that is? Yeah, you really can't push it. You can't push it at all. You can actually use that to your advantage because that means that if you want it to crack more, because sometimes when you are playing like more jazzy things, wild things, you know, the music calls for you to like intentionally crack notes. You'll actually want to do it more up here then. <laughs> <laughs> do you hear how like that sound has more body to it but then once i do it up here it's like really creepily hollow but i'm blowing the same way <laughs> If you want to sound creepy, you need this head joint. It's the sound of a flute as you're used to it, but off. Oh, that's interesting. I can't even play a uh, middle register D. I have to use a harmonic for that. Oh, that's interesting. Because it's changed the tuning so much, maybe you have to always use harmonics. Let me let me let me try that again. Okay, so. Does that, that, that sound weird? So like if I were to play in the real one Alright Ah! It messes up the tuning entirely as you can hear This part of the instrument was tuned so that it would be perfect with the lip plate being right here. Yeah, you hear how the tuning just goes completely wacko? Oh, okay. You can. 
can do like a almost like a tremolo y sort of thing. Oh, oh, that sounds creepy. Oh, I love it. Oh, yeah. This is what the like the chalice do, you know, when they go like like that. We can do it now, too. Like, you can actually, like, wiggle the whole thing against you, and that's a really cool effect. <laughs> I can't stop playing with this. This is so cool. <laughs> I'm having way too much fun. My life is complete now. If I were to buy this, I would probably get this tweaked so that it'll actually fit my face better. I'm a short person with a big head. So I'm, like, basically a chibi character in real life. Flute Center New York, thank you so much for sending this to me to try out. You have given me a gift of experiencing this. For those of you who are wondering about this, the Flute Center New York is selling it, so if you want to use my code and get it, by all means, go ahead. Robert Dick, if you are watching this, thank you so much for inventing this, for making this a thing. It is so darn cool. It's one of the things that I have wanted to try for years. I'm not even joking. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned a little something and found this to be really as interesting as I found it to be. Let the Flute Center of New York know what you want them to make me try. Make sure you follow the Flutes of New York on their Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll put their links to all that stuff in the bottom bar below. I'll be back on Twitch soon, so keep an eye out for that. But otherwise, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.